are these people? Uh, as I said earlier, we're back in school. I'm back at work uh, in full swing. So I'm a lot, at least right now, I'm a lot more tired than, you know, I was like a month or so ago, but I'll get used to it. But um, I'm back at work, uh, back at school, and our college students are now officially back in classes for the fall semester. And administrators have been busy over the summer in trying to crack down on what they realized was actually going to be a continuation of the protests that were happening on many college campuses throughout the country uh, back in the spring. So if you are a college student, you probably should take note uh, that some of the ways that your administration is working against you in terms of your right. Uh, to protest, mm -hmm. and especially given what is happening in Gaza. So this might be an, an article slash segment that you should take um, some great interest in if you are a college or a grad student and you're looking to support Palestine in as far as protesting or whatever. Uh, this might be helpful in kind of determining what your administration essentially was planning for you over the summer uh, while you were on break. So this article is from Sheer Post, uh, written by Carrie Sameba, who writes, U.S. universities spent their summer strategizing to suppress student activism. Here is their plan. So let's find out what their plan is, shall we? University administrators across the United States have declared an indefinite state of emergency on college campuses. Schools are rolling out policies in preparation for quashing pro-Palestine student activism this fall semester and reshaping regulations and even campuses in the process to suit this new normal. Which we talked Many a bit about last week. Yes. So. Yes. Um, Many of these pol policies being instituted share a common formula more militarization, more law enforcement, more criminalization, and more consolidation of institutional power. But where do these policies originate and why are they so similar across all campuses? The answer lies in the fact that they've been provided by the risk and crisis management consulting industries with the tactic support of trustees, Zionist advocacy groups, and federal agencies. Together, they employ the language of safety to disguise a deeper logic of control and securitization. Schools used this past summer to hear from consultants and prepare the crackdown with no time to waste. As the assistant director of campus safety at Oberlin College reminded participants on the recent webinar, navigating campus controversy challenges of managing protests and critical events, if your students are gone now, this is a good time to tighten <laughs> up your policies. Yeah. Yep. Run oh. by ex-military law enforcement and campus public safety officials, the risk and crisis management consulting industry constitutes a critical node of a larger repression network of state actors, partisan off-campus groups, and a Zionist lobby who collectively work to criminalize student political dissent. Risk management involves financial and non-financial risks, everything from regulatory compliance to campus safety. Institutional investors, driven by mandates for safe, predictable returns, encourage universities to adopt stringent risk management frameworks that prioritize financial stability and institutional reputation over intellectual integrity. So, money. Yeah. <laughs> Protect yeah. our money. That's what they're saying. So, well, as the Wu Tang put of, it, cash rules everything right. around me. Gotta get the money. Right. Um, In the uh, era of the student infatata, pro Palestinian student activism is regarded by stakeholders as posing risks severe enough to justify policies that reconfigure the boundaries of permissible expression. Oh, we can't have that. Someone might or, accidentally get poked in the eye with a flag or something, you know, uh, who well, knows? God forbid we actually make us do something financially that we do not want to <laughs> That's do. Because that's like all students have been asking for in this case, really, is to divest right. from Israeli money. And they're like, yeah, right. but, but it's money, but it's good money. 
you know, this like... This summer, the Risk and Crisis Management Consulting Industries hosted several convenings directly focused on the student mm. protests. In July, over 450 campus protection professionals convened in Atlanta <laughs> for the 11th Annual Campus Safety Conference. Of course, it's going to be in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, since well, that's Cop City. Students. That's where they're that, training. That's why I'm saying, at. of course, yeah. this is Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was the other? Wasn't the one in? Uh, what was the other Cop City? Baltimore. Right? Didn't Baltimore. they have like a college campus set that they were building yes. on that? And do you yes. believe? And an urban yes. environment. You know? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yes. Oh. Since the current unrest is extremely challenging to navigate and will likely continue into the 2024-25 academic year, this year's conference will solely cover protest successes and challenges. The conference advisory board consists of current and former law enforcement like Bobby Brasher, whose biography boasts that he has spent time in Israel <sighs> Yep. <laughs> observing Israeli <laughs> strategies and tactics. Yeah. Like, yep. It's a circle of life. <laughs> it's just, because you know. Back to Israel. He knows exactly how to wash blood washed money. Uh, you know, <laughs> like that's, he can get blood right out of those dollar bills. Don't worry about it. You know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Highlights from this year's conference include surveillance technology product demonstrations, which I think you're going to talk about. We're going to talk about later. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Table talk exercises at a session titled arm staff security enhancement or liability. Oh, Jesus Christ. The Blue Moon Consulting Group is another firm that serves dozens of universities and colleges. It recently hosted its own campus unrest themed crisis leadership retreat in Breckenridge, Colorado. What? Crisis leadership retreat. Okay. Um... Where participants receive training in media relations and protest management policy and planning. Such gatherings evoke a cross between a corporate PR workshop and a weapons Weapons expo. expo. Showcasing the latest security gadgets while offering polished media strategies for handling campus protests. So I can imagine this could be more like robotic dogs. Robotic. Potentially <laughs> on campus or those drones that you showed me. Yep. Drone security, get- robot security. Right. Also, you know, just general social media like uh web crawlers that could be a lot of stuff bro you know vr training for uh, you know campus mall cops could be any number of things you know new tasers sound cannons water jets just lots of tools of oppression right um, this coordinated crackdown is further exemplified by the Halal Foundation and Security Community Network's recent launch of Operation Secure Our Campuses, a security campaign targeting over 50 campuses. This summer, the SCN co-hosted a roundtable discussion with the major cities chiefs association featuring public safety officials from 92 universities and representatives from the FBI law enforcement association leaders, and Jewish security professionals. The discussion produced 10 security recommendations, such as banning encampments, implementing emergency plans, and deepening collaboration with law enforcement, all of which have rapidly been enacted across the country in recent weeks. Yeah. These gatherings help explain the uniformity of the EU policies recently announced from, on campuses across the U.S. From liberal arts schools like Paloma, Pomona. Pomona College to large yeah. public sy- university systems like the California State University System, Cal State. administrations have imposed a spat, spate of anti-protesting guidelines in the lead up to the fall <laughs> semester. Bans on encampments, temporary structures, amplified sound, chalking, freestanding signs, flowering, 
Outdoor displays and event tables are among the measures introduced to curtail political expression. These sweeping <laughs> measures close exi existing loopholes and preemptively stifle spontaneous and organized political activity. The University of South Florida's revised activities, signage, and use of public space policy illustrates this move, asserting that the university reserves the right to determine how to apply and interpret all time, place, and manner limitations on activities. Yeah. So censorship. Yep. Essentially, you better do what we tell you. That's that's what that is. You know. Nearly all recent university policy updates have intensified the bureaucratic hurdles for student organizations to gain approval to host an event. Some have gone further to capture control of campus activities. Carnegie Mellon University's updated expressive activity registration policy stipulates that all events involving quote unquote expressive activity like interpretive that dance from the, that deviate from the freedom of expression policy will be considered unregistered. In such cases, the administration will decide whether it is in the best interest of campus safety, security, and operations to prevent or disband the event or not, and whether those involved in providing leadership for organizing and executing such unregistered event should be subject to conduct review. Centralizing control through subjective interpretations of expressive activity ensures that Greek life events may proceed with minimal scrutiny, yeah. while groups like Students for Justice in Palestine face administration, administrative and disciplinary that's, harassment. That's because the Greeks make the college monies Right. Right. Exactly. Like this is also what will be what will be interesting is to going forward see what protest colleges will allow and what they won't allow. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, who's to say that Ukrainian or Israeli uh, protests will still happen? Okay. Like that's that's going to be the thing. So, and right. which ones they crack down heavily on. That's right. That's going to be the and and you won't even notice it barely unless you're paying attention, which we will be. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that works. Like, which performative measures will be allowed as well? You know, so it'll be interesting. Universities have metaphorically crafted policies to enshrine the privileged status of students who align with their political and material interests. Like we were saying. New York University's updated guidance and expectations on student conduct codifies the conflation of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism into the school's non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy and procedures for students. This update transforms Zionism into a Title VI protected class on NYU's campus where speech and conduct that would violate the NDAH if targeting Jewish or Israeli people can also violate the NDAH if directed towards Zionists. NYU's Faculty for Justice in Palestine chapter warns that the new guidance implies that any nationalist political ideology, Hindu nationalism, Christian nationalism, etc., that is integrated into some members of that group's understanding of their own racial or ethnic identity should be entitled to civic rights protections, a precedent that further entrenches the administration's role in policing political discourse. The shift not only reinforces administrative control over campus politics, but also insinuates its policies from challenge by equating dissent with harassment. University of California, which allocated $29 million to counter the student infatata in the spring, announced a ban on masking to conceal identity <laughs> and a directive requiring individuals to reveal their identity when asked. As new COVID-19 variants sweep California... And monkeypox and all that stuff. ...as key to achieving the delicate but essential balance between free speech rights and the need to protect the safety of our community. However, this notion of safety devoid of public health considerations endangers the entire community, granting campus police broad discretion to selectively legitimize norms of compliance. These new restrictions will disproportionately impact the immunocompromised, undocumented students, and Black and other over-police minorities, 
while simultaneously exposing student organizers to increased risk of doxing, harassment, and surveillance. Yeah, and it's also do what we say when we told you to say it and not now when we don't. So, right. you know, like it was mandated for a while on college campuses, and now because it's being used against you, you're you're going, oh, maybe we should not. I, uh, you know, we're installing facial recognition uh-huh. that doesn't work well with that. So if you could not. Um. Similarly, the University of Virginia, Madison, James Madison University and Virginia Commonwealth University have implemented mass restrictions, restrictions in compliance with Virginia Code 18.2-422. Which bans any mask, hood, or other garment that conceals the wearer's identity. These measures reflect a broader trend among public universities in states threatening to withhold funding from institutions that fail to contain pro Palestine student organizing. And there it is. Yeah. So, but I've been wondering about this. What if it's a Muslim woman who wears a jihad? Yeah. How does this play into that? Right. So, so, so again, this makes no sense to me. Uh, but again, it's just the idea of like, if we see students do this, then we can defund your your school. Yeah. Which ultimately colleges and universities don't want to. Right. So. Well, and that's been a problem. Using- on- universities forever i i had a buddy in college that was like sikh and like mm-hmm. part of the religion is the turban Turbans. and like hat coverings weren't allowed on campus or whatever you know and it was like i i you know it's like he also would carry a knife and like that's religiously things they do that doesn't you know bode well for campus policy so there's some weird rules with all that so but yeah no that's going to be an issue for them i'm sure so right louisa county for instance pulled all of its funding for piedmont virginia community college in its 2025 adopted budget after the sjp chapter hosted a screening of the documentary film israelism on campus uh me can you zoom out please yes sorry beyond policy solutions the risk and crisis management consulting industries shape the physical and operational landscape of campuses their suggestions often push clients to purchase gear from partners in the burgeoning campus safety market leading university administration to in turn allocate more money to meet the ever-growing costs of managing dissent to respond to the student infotata, universities have invested in license plate readers and AI classification tools to identify and monitor non-student outsiders, quote unquote. This investment in surveillance technology enhances internal security infrastructure while deepening ties with law enforcement. For example, as reported by CBS New York, the NYPD has worked with dozens of schools to devise protest response plans for the fall, notably a zero tolerance police policy on encampments. This university police collaboration spans all scales from local mutual aid agreements to DHS backed fusion centers. Uh, Such coordination will fuel the increased militarized campus policing emblematic of the post 9-11 era with over 100 colleges and universities now equipped with military surplus gear through the Department of Defense 1033 program. The integration of SWAT teams and parlor military gear into campus life, along with its own system of ID checkpoints, embodies the ambitions of war profiteering university trustees who envision higher education as an extension of the U.S. empire. As campus police acquire more advanced technology, U.S. university administrations easily eagerly funnel resources to accommodate their growing arsenal, perpetuating an arms race within the academic sphere. This professionalization has been accompanied by the rise of campus policing expertise as a distinct field of knowledge production. 
It is a technocratic pursuit situated within the administrative engine of the neoliberal university, a system of efficiency and control designed to maximize quote unquote security. Under the guise of neutrality, the label of expertise attached to campus policing conceals its bias alignment with the board's financial interests. So essentially, um, a cap, <laughs> uh -huh. basic. I mean, in in a matter of simply, yeah, but it's just the idea of like, and again, this is happening under generally liberal universities where they would tend to be more democratic or lean quote unquote left where we're seeing uh -huh. more militarization of police. So now like they militarize like local police. Now they're militarizing campus police too. Well, so, and it's, it all points to that, like, uh, you know, that liberal arts, our money. right? Like that's, the, that's really the bottom line that if that decorum right. is, is upset, the, the Karen start to Karen, you know? Right. So, We've we've all seen those those teachers. We all know who I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So ones that would otherwise give you lip service to, you know, your like Safe. just that so they have liberal Safe. bona fides, right? Like, you know. But yeah, this is this is about the money, Lebowski. This is right. Israel gives us a couple of wings to our colleges, so we need you right. to not. And the people who give us other wings to the colleges tell us that, you know, we need to get in line I here. I will give so, you money if, if people are protesting and, like, breaking shit. Well, and the problem with that was, was that who does that protesting actually affect? It's really not the college. Because the college will make no. money regardless. Right? right? Like, if you gave them tuition fees, they got their bag. They don't care if you get right. learnt after that. Right? Who it affects are the parents who want their kids to actually be learning at college, right? And to get the expertise so that they can get a job in a field that they are, you, you know what I mean? So those are the ones who start calling the college. They're the ones who go, my kid is, you know, having to deal with protesters on campus all day or, you know, so that's who they're hearing from. They're hearing from their, the people who write their checks. So... Uh, you know that's the battle it's the parents versus the funders and well not only parents but banks because again like you know a lot of these financial institutions especially if you have student loans like yeah. that affects the bottom line too because right. especially like if this continues and again that kind of relates to parents too like or students might just leave yeah so uh, that affects so, you know, so financial loan servicers, federal government and private, you know, do not necessarily want that either. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, so again, it's just the money, follow the money. And this is really what this is about. It's the idea of like, and I know Sabi says this all the time, given that she worked in higher ed, colleges run our business. They're mm -hmm. not schools they are a business and they run as such and they prioritize their finances over everything else and especially given right now like the idea of colleges is that there's new dorms like there's all these perks you know like whatever to kind of entice young impressionable minds to be like oh this is a college that i want to go to for the next four plus years like if that's tainted by the idea of protests, then that's marketing that's being lost to the school. So yeah. in order for like students to want to go, like either pull them out because they feel unsafe or the idea of like students who might be sympathetic to the Palestinian cause who are kind of seeing the protests and making two and putting two, to, two together would be like, I don't want to go to that college. Well, because now of what it's, they stand for in terms of Israel. Yeah, all you have to do to fight this is essentially cost them more money than they're earning from that country. That's that's the fight now. 
is right. all you have to do is tell them, look, divest, don't take money from that country in any capacity, and you got no problems with us. But until then, we're going to hurt your pocketbook by at least this amount. So, right. you know, make, make their wallets choose. Very easy decision if that's the problem. So, right. And it's funny how, like, you know, how colleges are just willing to just give money away towards police enforcement and toys in order to crack down yeah. on students who happen to protest. Mm -hmm. You know, well, but they cannot give scholarships to students who actually might need to in order to go to college. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's just kind of priorities are just really fucked up. But Regardless, against this backdrop, the intensified online surveillance of student activism illuminates the digital underbelly of militarized repression. In July, the University of California Police Department, recipient of 1.3 million of diverted DEI funding redesignated after last year's protests, obtained a search warrant to seize Instagram data from the UNCJSJP Instagram account such as names, addresses, phone numbers, credit card information, connection logs, direct messages, and location. This follows a 73,500 annual contract signed in 2016 between the UNC Police Department and Social Sentinel Social Media Monitoring. Meanwhile, the Orange County Police Attorney's Office continues to pursue criminal charges against community members and students for their participation in the Triangle Gaza Solidarity Encampment. UNC SJP remains under suspension on an interim basis while the student conduct processes considered allegations of violations of university policies, according to school officials. Oops. There you go. Long before the student infatata, both private and public universities sought to eliminate students for justice in Palestine from their campuses. <clears throat> Last year, George Washington University and Rutgers University suspended their J SJP chapters after the fall semester under the pretext of restoring order on campus. Both universities have again targeted SJP. George Washington's SJP is suspended through the fall, while Rutgers SJP will remain suspended until this next summer. Alongside SJP, GWU suspend, further suspended Jewish Voice for Peace and six other student organizations, including those that provide essential cultural and religious services, such as the Muslim, Arab, and Asian American Student Association. Mm. Like, <laughs> That's because China, Taiwan, China, China, China can't have right. can't be pro China right now. That's right. That's the other problem. So right. In a statement condemning new university anti-protesting policies, the American Association of University Professors denounced the introduction of these top-down edicts by that bypass the central role of elected fac faculty bodies, such as faculty senates in university <laughs> governments. The, AP the AAUP notes that these policies will particularly affect contingent and full-time non-tenure track faculty members and graduate student employees, especially people of color in these groups. In another case of administrative overreach, the University of Pennsylvania provided the House of Representative Commu Committee on Education and the Workforce with Professor Huda J. Akredline. Fakhredine, sorry, do butchered that name. I'm sure. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Right. And Dr. Ahmad Amalda's CVs, syllabi from the fall 2022 semester onward, all course wide communications since the fall 2023 semester, and any communications related to the Gaza Solidarity Encampment, Faculty for Justice in Palestine, or the Palestine Rights Festival since August 1st, 2023. While the university agreed to provide their CVs and syllabi and place holes on both professors' university email accounts, despite not being legally obligated to do so, it remains unclear how much additional information it will share with the committee. Mm. This escalating 
authoritarian oversight similarly manifests in recent developments to curtail student decision-making power. This summer, the UNC system announced its plan to reorganize its honor court after over 100 years, moving from a student-led to a faculty-led model. Screenshots of a UNC Board of Trustees group chat obtained by a public records request reveal the underlying motivation for the shift, with one trustee commenting, commenting that disciplinary decisions should be adjuncted either within the criminal courts or via the provost, not within the honor court. The recovation of long-standing student decision-making bodies like UNC's honor court may signal an emerging trend. As students and faculty pursue their divestment demands, universities might gradually attempt to dismantle shared governance structures to maintain absolute top-down authority. Yeah, which will be happening. Right. Oh. Uh, last week, in a decisive 16 to 1 vote, the New School University Student Senate suspended all funding to registered student organizations until the university meets SJP's divestment demands. To retaliate, the, the administration seized 40. $400,000 of student funds and announced that they would now unilaterally control the management of these funds without the input of elected student representatives. Jeez, Which is, Christ. Uh, yeah, you know, nice of them. Um, university administrators are acutely aware that the student body sides with liberation. Yeah. Uh, student referendums have historically served as a useful tactic in the long-term campaign to enact uh, BDS on campus. In the 2023-24 school year, for example, divestment referendums passed at Clark, uh, Bowdoin, UMass Amherst, and numerous other campuses. Confronted with these results, university presidents frequently overturn student-led divestment referendums, as demonstrated recently by the University of Pennsylvania and Cornell, where presidents rejected BS, BDS ballot outcomes despite them passing with a majority. So, vetoing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> some administrations go so far as to cancel the referendum altogether, as was the case at Vanderbilt and the University of Michigan last school year. Students' overwhelming support of BDS follows at the level of student government. Last school year, every UC undergrad campus student government, except UC Berkeley, adopted student funding divestment resolutions. The consequences of new university anti-protest policies have already unfolded at the University of Michigan. On August 28th, police violently intervened to fort a die-in on the diag organized by the school's divestment coalition. Yeah. The aftermath left two individuals hospitalized and four arrested, including a 16-year-old. As the academic year progresses, these episodes of state violence will undoubtedly become the norm rather than the exception. Yep. But Zionist trained law enforcement officers to send onto campus quadrangles to perform spectacles of administrative accountability to the Board of Trustees, the Imperial Boomerang returns, binding the brutality of overseas and domestic settler security states. Remind, re remind people of any historical events? No? Nothing in Ohio? No, just me? Um, you know, Kent State? No? Okay. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, we knew this was going to happen, but it's, I still, it's still the idea of like. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. <laughs> well, well, America <sighs> equally militarizing police. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. collaborating with the Israel lobby and and donors to crack down on anyone who shows dissent. Yeah. Uh, and as you kind of talked about in your last segment, basically developing a system of fear, you know, where, yep. you know, well, psychologically, is... you know, trying to force college students to basically be like, shut up, or we essentially can ruin you as far well, as yeah. your career and otherwise. You only have the right to assemble over what we say you can assemble to. That's right. That's literally what this is about. So, right. 
but, you know. as you said, you know, like Greek life and with the issues of Greek life will probably, you know, be fine. Like uh-huh. any pro Israel slash Ukraine Which, as a person protest, if they will be any, will probably thirty be minutes. Fine. 30 minutes from Florida State who had direct problems with death among their Greek life, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I I think the few Palestinian protests that will happen shouldn't be a problem for them. They should be worried about other stuff, but... Right. It's interesting how this is kind of trickling down to not just pro... to, like, it's the idea of pro-Palestinian protests, per se, but basically any... Yeah, clubs that associate with people of color in general, like Don't associate with any, kind of a, any people we deem a foreign enemy, like China or Russia or whatever. Those are also, people. yep, those will black, also be part of like, that. Africa. Plenty of those will be a problem. Right, so, the Israeli lobby has basically said, you know, that you know, black young black people are dangerous in terms of you know, in terms of their cause, you know, regarding Israel, because generally, especially given our tradition, like, we know oppression. Yeah. They're probably better than anyone else, and we're able to make those associations fairly easily to what's happening in Palestine, and we would generally stand up against that. And that's thing, especially within the context of college, especially so. So, so yeah, this is not, so I, it's just the idea of basically trickling down or hammering down on pretty much almost everybody on campus, except if you're white, yeah. more or less. Like, essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, which, it'll be interesting to see how students, you know, protest if they do, you know, moving <laughs> forward. But at the end of the day, you know, like, obviously, you know, just my little sermon is for students who may be watching this and you know, kind of seeing how your college may essentially be fucking you over now. Yeah. Um, you know, do whatever you can safely. You know, obviously, like think outside that box. Right. You know, find those loopholes. Right. I mean, you guys are smart enough. You put know, those, like put those BAs in a lot of work. You know. Right. So. So. Let us know. And somewhat a longer segment but i think necessary uh given what will probably be needed in the next few months and probably after um but let us know in the co- in the call co- in the comments what you think and is your school if you're in college or a grad school like targeting protests or protests in a similar way let us know we yep. interested to hear from you in terms of what uh anti-protest strategies are being initiated on your college campus um if you're interested in donating to INN, you feel free to scan the QR code or go to the link that you see at the bottom of your screen uh, to donate. If you're in chat right now, you can type um, explanation point donate in order to give uh, if you don't remember the link. Uh, please support us as YouTube basically hates us and has made it clear to us that they're not going to push any of our material at all. Gee, I wonder why. So the only way that we're able to grow is to you by liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, please share our content to help us fight suppression and be sure to make a comment that actually does, well, I'm not sure if it helps us any, but at minimum, it helps us know what you're thinking and definitely gives us ideas for stories that we can report on. So please let us know in the comments or share your thoughts in there uh, and help us get to free K. We're uh, growing gradually, but Obviously, with YouTube not pushing us in the algorithm, it's going to be a longer road in order to get uh, to higher levels. So the way that we've been able to grow is through word of mouth and people sharing and liking our content. So continue doing that. And we appreciate you guys for helping us with that. And thanks for watching.